Trump's lawyers are currently making their case, explaining why Donald Trump should not be indicted. But the latest news from CNBC, Trump lawyers told to expect indictment of former president as grand jury meets in D.C. court. That's right. Donald Trump will likely be indicted over something to do with January 6th. Democrats probably will try and uh, they'll use this to get Trump removed under, I think it's the 14th Amendment, insurrection that uh, if you've waged insurrection against the U.S., you can't hold office. We've seen the trial balloons with many Republicans in uh, uh, the past midterm elections. So what happens if Donald Trump is removed? Who's next in line? Many would have said Ron DeSantis a year ago. In fact, I think Ron DeSantis actually was beating Trump in the prediction markets for some time. But now it may be Vivek Ramaswamy because Ron DeSantis is sinking in the polls and in the prediction markets. And you know what, man? You know, I'll put it like this. My view is the Republican Party, never been a fan of them, uh, never cared for them. And I didn't even vote for Donald Trump in 2016. But I voted for Trump in 2020 because I liked his foreign policy. Not perfect, but better. And, uh, you know, I want to see him fire people, schedule F, that kind of stuff. That's the only thing I really see right now is making it worth it. Trump had a bunch of bad personnel, undeniable. He had some bad decisions. It is what it is. But why would I vote for establishment politics? And that appears to be the DeSantis campaign. You don't get me wrong. He's winning the culture wars in Florida. But his campaign is coming across like Democrat strategy. When I look at the Democrats and how they operate, and I look at the DeSantis campaign and how it operates, I'm like, same thing. I don't know, whatever. You can tell me I'm wrong. That's fine. I'm not saying I'm right about everything, but I'm telling you, that's how I feel about it. And so long as that's the case, I won't support him. I mean, that's it. Now, don't, look, I, I, obviously, I think the big issue is the deception, the, the deep fakes and stuff. But it looks like the play is to remove Trump by force and not through a Democratic victory. Let's read this news and then we'll talk about the current state of politics. Here's the report from CNBC. Trump's lawyers were told Thursday by prosecutors to expect an indictment against the former president in connection with his efforts to reverse his loss in the 2020 election. Full stop. Donald Trump did not try to reverse his loss. Donald Trump was a, was a party to many lawsuits, not even just his, but there were lawsuits to prevent uh, to, uh, I shouldn't say reverse, but pre prevent loss is probably better. Reverse implies Trump lost. And then after the fact, he went, no, 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 no. The reality is votes come in. There's a process. The votes get counted. And it all ended when Mike Pence counted the votes and Joe Biden won. That's it. And there were certainly some lawsuits. And before that happened, Trump was making his case. So it's like the race was still on, right? Anyway, Trump's lawyers, Todd Blanche and John Loro, met Thursday morning in Washington, D.C. with prosecutors for the Department of Justice Special Counsel Jack Smith and were informed of the planned indictment. At around the same time, the grand jury that could soon vote on the criminal on criminally charging Trump assembled in Washington federal court. Multiple members of that panel panel were seen entering the E. Barrett Pre uh, Prettyman courthouse around 830 a.m. So, you know, look, I put it off as long as I could. We're trying to see if there was going to be indictment. We don't know. By the time you watch this, news may come out because this video is going to go up at four. Early Thursday afternoon, members of the U.S. Marshal Service, who are responsible for security at federal court, met with officials from the U.S. Park Police and Washington, D.C. Police Department at the Prettyman Courthouse, NBC reported. It looks like we're going to see this. The media, of course, is claiming Donald Trump is an insurrectionist. He incited violence when in reality, Trump told people to be peaceful and not to be violent. But here we are. Now, with this news, you would think that Donald Trump would tank in the prediction markets and everyone would say there's no way he's going to be president. Still, despite all the indictments, Donald Trump holds a 58 cent lead or he holds the lead with 58 cents in the prediction markets at Predict It. Ron DeSantis is now at 16 cents, tied with Vivek Ramaswamy at 16 cents. This is not a poll. There, th th this is two things. First, it is people buying shares in who they think they will win the nomination. If you buy one share at 16 cents of Ron DeSantis and then he becomes the nominee, that share will sell for one dollar. I believe that's how it works. One dollar. That means it's a good bet. Some people will buy shares because it's a good bet. 16 cents gets you a dollar. Hey, better than five to one, right? Some people might be thinking 58 cents for Donald Trump is even better because he's going to get it no matter what. But Vivek Ramaswamy has now become profitable. 
This is a combination of a poll and prediction in that the wisdom of the crowd is making a bet on who they think is going to win. I think it's substantive to look at. When Ron DeSantis is sinking, despite the fact that Trump could get knocked out, you might be asking, how could that be? Donald Trump could be indicted and removed. Certainly, Ron DeSantis is not. Up, 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 up. Vivek Ramaswamy. It could very well be Vivek. Why? Well, Vivek is, he's killing it. He goes on shows. He speaks openly. He says what he thinks, even if there's potential negative press from it. I've mentioned this before, but when he was like, we should have a civics test for voting, I'm like, wow, that's brave. Because you'll get attacked relentlessly by Democrats for it. But Vivek is just, he's sitting here on the show and he's like, you know, they're probably going to get mad at me for saying this, like his, his people. But he's like, there's got to be some kind of like civic test for voting. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Vivek is quick witted, sharp, knowledgeable, principled. I like the guy. Nobody's perfect. And I don't trust everyone completely, especially politicians. But uh, I'm a big fan of Vivek. Some people are even saying Trump Ramaswamy 2024 could be cool. Tim Scott might be good. Not so sure. I think he might be more war hockey. Hmm, I don't know. Take a look. At this, take a look at this from Politico. What Ron DeSantis misjudged about the 2024 race and how he can revive his faltering campaign. What I will say is two things. What I have found is that very few people in the general space care about Ron DeSantis. Ron DeSantis supporters get really, really angry when you point these things out and they attack viciously, trying to win flame wars instead of trying to earn allies. That's why I think they're going to lose. And then they say, but Trump does it because they think they can compete with Trump. If that's the case, you deserve to lose. Don't care. Many people will say, but his policies are better. Don't care. The way I see things impacts what I do, right? That's how everybody is. It's a simple statement. So if you insult me over and over again, probably not going to want to be involved in whatever it is you got going on. So I have to wonder if these uh, uh, Ron DeSantis supporters and surrogates and personalities are actually just Trump supporters trying to sink Ron DeSantis. And it's the smartest way to do it. I love this. Um, the one takeaway from this, let me just pull up this one line, the, the one line that I think uh, matters the most. They say it is telling the misfire of an announcement happened on Twitter or X, as it's called now. The campaign has appeared to believe that the governor can only secure the nomination if it wins constant Twitter flame wars against the likes of pro-Trump voices Cat Turd and Alex Brusowitz. Could not agree more. Who wrote this? Politico? I'm surprised. Who, who wrote this? Uh, uh, what do we have? Rich Lowry. Yeah. You know, when I say like, hey, Ron DeSantis was fairly weak in his announcement, they go, but Alex Brusowitz said a thing. And I'm like, I don't care. Do I, I don't care about Alex Brusowitz. We've had him on the show a couple times. Oh, we, we've tried inviting DeSantis people on the show. They won't do it. And I'm like, I'm telling you, I look at this and I'm like reeks of the same Democrat establishment garbage. Sorry. And if you think I'm wrong, you are DeSantis supporters. You're doing nothing to convince me otherwise. Here's Alex Brusowitz. He's the one who. Oh, OK, so that's 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 who posted it. I think it's funny. Cat turd and I remain undefeated. Check the latest cat turd poll. Very funny. Well, let me show you a, a tweet from me with a response from a very strong DeSantis supporter. I tweeted a lot of the DeSantis supporters come off to me just like the old GOP, which I never cared for. If anything, I'd vote libertarian before I'd vote establishment Republicans. This is not to say DeSantis comes off that way to me. He doesn't. But his campaign and his surrogates do. Max Alago, prominent DeSantis supporter, has uh, 30,000 followers, says, quote, I can't support Trump because he was endorsed by David Duke and Nick Fuentes. Oh, it is just so <laughs> insufferable. Yes, this is the straw man false narrative tactics that I have so loathed from Democrats. Now, what do we see from like Alex Brusowitz, Cat Turd and Laura Loomer? Um, vicious attacks. And I don't mean to say like uh, um, political attacks, like m manipulations and things like that. What I mean is like Laura Loomer is relentless on digging through the dirt of DeSantis donors and his campaign and calling him out. It is relentless. But it's on the level. They're, they're, they're mad that she's uh, uh, looking into who the donors are and she has thoughts and views on why those donors are bad. What am I supposed to say about that? Is the Santa's campaign going to come out and be like, well, Laura Loomer claimed this guy donated to Ron DeSantis and how dare she? And I'm like, did he? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Bruce Witz, 
has posted things like there was a photo of, I think, George Soros at an event. And he says, OK, that's not real, but I'm not surprised, blah, blah, blah. Ron DeSantis's campaign put out a deep fake. Several called it real life Trump, even though they were fake. And then when I said, yo, this is shockingly wrong, they should not do this. The response from DeSantis supporters was Tim Pool is stupid and actually thought those were real. And I'm like, well, OK, I guess the DeSantis campaign did not take down the posts, has kept them up. And according to The New York Times, whether you trust them or not, produced the video of the LGBT issues, passed it off to someone else to make it look like they didn't make it. It's just a bunch of weird pandery establishment manipulation. The worst advice. What Max Alago said in this post, I can't support Trump because he was endorsed by David Duke and Nick Fuentes. When did I ever say that? When did I ever say I can't support Ron DeSantis because he's endorsed by people I disagree with? Ron DeSantis is endorsed by a lot of people I disagree with. And so is Donald Trump. Ah, false framing the insufferable, the insufferable responses of the DeSantis surrogates and supporters. And this is a perfect example. In fact, I even responded, thank you for exemplifying one of my issues. I'm going to use it in my video about why Ron keeps sinking. Y'all are insufferable. What I'm saying is the DeSantis campaign is coming off like a traditional Republican establishment campaign that the people who are working for and supporting him are coming off like establishment politics, falsely framing things, manipulating information and photos, just like the Democrats had always done. And I've been complaining about this for some time. You will not be able to come to me, a man who has been screeching since 2015, stop making me defend Trump because the media kept lying about him. You're not going to be able to lie about Trump and come to me and be like, vote for us instead. I'll be like, you're exactly what I've been complaining about. But that's their game. That's why Ron is losing. Trump earned new voters like me. Moderate, centrist, little left leaning, a lot of issues. Big for Bernie Sanders because more so anti-establishment than anything. I liked his consistency, but boy, did he let us down. Didn't vote for Trump in 2016. Only came around to Trump like uh, two months, three months before the actual election. And even now, so I can only really say I think he's the best bet towards firing a lot of people because he did have a lot of people that he hired that were really bad. But I but I trust in his emotional state. Trump's an emotional, arrogant guy, and he's going to want revenge. That's it. I wouldn't vote for any one of these establishment uh, types. Last year, Ron DeSantis came off more like a uh, uh, anti-establishment guy fighting the culture war. And I said, we need that Trumpian strategy with tact. And that could be Ron DeSantis. And then what happened? He launched a campaign rather poorly. His campaign staff started just relentlessly attacking allies. It's not just my opinion. Mike Cernovich talks about it. The DeSantis supporters must actually be Trump supporters. The only thing I can see, because there's no reason for Christina Peshaw, Redfern, Brian Griffin, these other people to start insulting me on Twitter over my concerns about what's going on in the state of Florida when I didn't even insult Ron DeSantis over it. That's it. A video went viral of Jazz Jennings. I said, is this is all I basically said, is this happening in Florida? Like, where's Ron DeSantis? What did I get? The DeSantis people just went nuts, started insulting and attacking me. And then when I said, hey, it's probably a bad idea. Why are you insulting and attacking me? They doubled down and said, Tim Pool's whining and crying. Then when I said, y'all are really sinking Ron DeSantis, they responded with Tim had his feelings hurt. So now he won't support DeSantis. And I'm just like, man, DeSantis has surrounded himself with the most ineffective, insufferable people I've ever seen. And for that reason, he's sinking. I'm not saying my support of the man is predicated upon the awful people he surrounded himself with and who support him. I'm saying that there's going to be a ton of people who will have an emotional and visceral reaction to being repeatedly insulted. And they're going to be like, I am so done with this. I mean, to be fair, when his own campaign staff and gubernatorial staff started insulting me, I was just like, well, okay, I guess. If you don't want my support, you don't get it. Jeez. There's simple answers to this. They could have simply said something like, uh, 
Well, I, I've, I've said this before, but when it comes to the Jazz Jennings things, they could have been like, working on it, winky emoji. They could have said nothing. But this is what you get. I can't support Trump because he was endorsed by David Duke and Nick Fuentes. Are you daft? Are you trying to, are, you know, maybe, to be fair, maybe the DeSantis campaign, they're just really stupid people. Like they're not very smart. They don't know what they're doing. They don't, they can't formulate arguments. Another reason why I have little faith in Ron DeSantis. He needs to fire these people. Now, hold on there a minute. He fired a lot of people. Okay. Respect. He fired that guy who posted that sun and red, the black sun Nazi thing. Okay. I think he's starting to figure it out. And that's why I've said, I think he can turn it around. But one of the biggest hurdles he's, he's got is that his supporters are going out on Twitter and intentionally sabotaging support for Ron DeSantis. I don't know how you overcome that. That's a tough challenge. Like, how do you, should the DeSantis campaign go to Max Alago and say, stop tweeting about us? We disavow you. You are hurting us. Probably would be a good idea. According to reporting from Laura Loomer, they think that this Max Alago guy is actually working for DeSantis. But I'm like, I don't know, man. He's really hurting the DeSantis campaign. Like more than anyone I've seen on social media. DeSantis is, has fired a lot of people and he's got a lot of negative press for it. I don't think that's fair. I think he should be firing people. I think it's the right thing to do. He needs to restructure this if he's going to turn it around. And I think he's figuring out what that's all about. For this, Trump supporters are attacking him. Well, you know, that's politics. You ain't going to sail through a storm without getting wet. But I think it's the right move for him to do. And he could turn things around. Right now, his prediction markets have him tied with Vivek. Unpredicted. His polls are sinking. This is bad news. But he's making moves. So we'll see. Whether or not Ron is the right guy will, de will be determined uh, uh, on, in my view, whether or not he can turn this ship around. And it is a good move to start firing people. I don't know how you deal with having a base that is insufferable and annoying. That is going to cost him a lot. And it is. But I can tell you, he should terminate his communication staff outright. Like Jeremy Redfern fired. Uh, is, is Brian Griffin, is, is that the name of the guy? Uh, it's funny, he's named after the dog on uh, Family Guy. Uh, let me see if I can find this, uh, find this, make sure I'm getting it right. Because maybe it's not Brian Griffin. I'm pretty sure it is. Let me see if uh, all that really comes up is uh, the dog. Maybe I got the name wrong. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to do a search here. I want to make sure I get this one right, so you're going to have to bear with me. But there's a, uh, uh, maybe it was, maybe, uh, oh yeah, there you go. Right. Yeah. Okay. No, I got it right. Brian Griffin is his name. Yeah. Fire him. Uh, press secretary for Ron DeSantis fired. Christina Peshaw fired Jeremy Redfern. So Peshaw, Griffin and Redfern should be terminated. And I think it's because they do a really, really bad job. Uh, they're, they're, they're not giving good advice. They're not directing DeSantis. In, in, a, in a way that's helping his campaign, as evidenced by his polls sinking, as evidenced by uh, supporter, pre previous supporters turning on him. I was I was big for DeSantis last year. I was like, he's probably the guy because Trump's too brash and arrogant, talks about body slamming reporters, but they still attack me anyway. All right, Ron, you got to fire him. And I said it a while ago, you got to fire him and you got to you got to own it and you got to take responsibility and you got to be authentic. You need better advice. If he doesn't do that, I'm not so confident he can win. But look, I don't run presidential campaigns. What do I know? I'm just some dude who complains on the Internet. OK, some people don't like my videos. I don't have nearly as big as an audience as, say, like Steven Crowder or whatever. So take their advice. I can only tell you how I feel. OK, and, and, that, and that could be completely meaningless. But I'll tell you how I feel. And that is I find the DeSantis campaign to be uh, uh, abysmal. I think DeSantis's choice for staff has been has been terrible. I think these people are doing a, a terrible job. They're they're thin skinned, quick to react, aggressive, constantly attacking allies. His supporters are doing the same thing. Ron made the right move in firing a lot of these people. He's got to fire more of them. He needs to clean house. He needs to clean house. He needs to find better people and he can turn it around. It is still early. But for the time being, with the likes of these individuals, I just don't see it. Instead of being um, authentic in their defense of Ron DeSantis, they become this like, I don't know, vile, vapid sludge. Donald Trump should have fired Fauci. He's the guy who says, I'm going to drain the swamp. He'd vote for me. And then what does he do? Oh, but I couldn't. He couldn't. 
And this is something Trump supporters are like, but he couldn't fire Fauci. Oh, come on. I know it's hard to fire federal employees. Fair point. Not the easiest thing. But I have said this before. He could have shunned him. He could have just said, like, don't come on TV with me at the very least. Let me be a fence sitter here and say Trump could have done more, right? So Trump supporters, you know, you're not going to win that one. But Trump wants revenge. That I recognize. Ron DeSantis needs to come out strongly for firing people. He, you know what I see? The challenge may be he doesn't have enough X factor. He doesn't have the charisma, the passion, the anger in his voice. Donald Trump has something to it. And you know what? The way I described it was like that scene from Captain America where he speaks in the intercom in Winter Soldier. A lot of great scenes in that, huh? And he's like, if you stand with me, you know, blah, blah, blah. I don't know what exactly he said, but then Anthony Mackie's character is like, do you do you write that? And he's like, no, it's like just he's just naturally charismatic. It's funny. Chris Evans, the actor, can turn that on. He can turn on that strong. Let me stand with me and I will fight for you. That 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 uh, uh, impassioned plea. Ron doesn't have it. He doesn't have it. I don't know. I don't know how you get it. I think you only get it through true conviction. And I don't think Ron is angry enough. He comes off as not caring, I would say. He does these meetings and, he, uh, you know, when he announces he's running for president, I didn't feel it. He's like, I'm leading the great American comeback. And I'm just like, oh, you know what we need? And Trump doesn't even necessarily have this, this degree. You need the dude on the stallion with the sword and the crown and the flowing robes standing in front of all of his loyal soldiers, raising his sword and going, Rah! just screaming. I mean, figuratively. What I mean to say is you need someone who's going to be stern. And Vivek doesn't have this either. The thing is, Trump has more of it than anybody else. Someone who's going to stand up, grip the sides of that podium and say, this country will not fall. I will not allow the weaponization of government to be used against political opponents. I will not allow the mutilation of children in this country. Barack Obama had it. Anyway, I'm ranting. I'm ranting, right? We'll see. The indictment for Trump is probably coming. And if he does get indicted and they pull his name off the ballot, it's going to split the vote. But I don't know that Ron DeSantis will be the guy. Perhaps Vivek Ramaswamy. We'll see. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.